and you talk about this line between life and death, which is really interesting. And, um, it's edging along the fragile line between life and death, peering cautiously into the other side. It is as if we were immortal, neither alive nor actually dead. Now, these are very dark and interesting ideas. I was trying to explore why, some rationale for why you would go and do something. I mean, what, what on earth would, would make you want to climb the hardest way up something when you can walk up the back with your hands in your pockets? I could only talk for myself. From my, from my point of view, I, I thought it was that, that, that when you are doing it, uh, your whole uh, perspective on life changes. You're in that sort of limbo where, between life and death. I mean, it sounds very melodramatic. I don't mean that. I mean, if you screw up, you can die, and if you, don't, you make the right decisions, you're okay. But you're living utterly in the present. You know, you, you can't worry about what's going on at home. You can't worry about your mortgage or your job. You just have... To, and, and you're in this sort of suspended reality all the time. And when you come down off the mountain that perspective begins to fade. And you think, well, I want it again. And that's, mm. for me anyway, why I want you go back up to visit these places. Now, you don't do it because you want to die and you don't do it because you want to get hurt, but you do it because you, you have an inescapable sense of feeling immortal. I, I think you do. I mean, you, you, clearly you don't because we all keep dying, so I'm obviously wrong on that one. But mm. th there is a sense of living utterly in the present that... that is very life enhancing you know. so um, I, I'd want to just ask you now because we're getting into these darker subjects I'm going to ask you the same question I asked for the first book about the beckoning si silence this beckoning um, silence um, what is that hinting about um, well it's, uh, uh, it's uh, you know that uh, when you look over the edge of a cliff or if you stick your head out of a skyscraper uh, anyone, whether you're a climber or not a climber, will have this lurching, pulling sensation. And um, the classic thing that non-climbers say is, oh, I can never go climbing because I'm scared of heights. Well, so are climbers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, we know what happens when you hit the ground. We're probably more scared of heights. But th what, what's happening is that your eye is trying to find the ground. It's tr and, and basically your eye to brain thing is yeah, not, it's what we climbers call exposure, you can't yeah, find it and yeah. so that gives you this great sense of like you're being pulled down and, but the, when you look at something like the eye group, you go and stand underneath it, it's just this vast thing and, it, and to be up there on it, you know, playing games so to speak, yes. to me that's what the beckoning science meant, it was that, 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 that en enormous attraction that it sucks you towards it and yet at the same time you look at it and you think of all the things that are dangerous about it and there's this huge you're repelled by it at the same time. And you need the attraction, you need the fear, and you need yeah. the excitement. If you had just one, it wouldn't work. You need both of them. All your books um, talk an enormous amount about death and ghosts and yeah, but there's a lot of humor. Yeah, there's a lot of humor. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not all just... Sort of, just know, talking about this. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. It sounds like... Demons. Nietzsche or something. Mountain yeah. gods. Yeah. <laughs> kill myself. I was a philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next step lot. leads to darkness. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I'm just not quite sure because you, you say fairly doesn't, doesn't death fascinate you in so much it, does. As it, it validates that's why I'm asking you see <laughs> this is the contradiction that everybody has about climbers you know they, they, they have this bizarre idea that we all have a death wish you know and okay so my career probably doesn't prove it the other way but it, the, if anything the opposite is true if anything our motto is that you know there's, there's no points for being dead Climbing a mountain and dying in the process hmm. is, is a complete. It's about as pointless as swimming to the centre of the ocean. You have to come home, you know. But because death negates everything that you're trying to do, hmm. but equally well, death also validates everything that you do. Yes. Because in a way, it's what it's it's what I, I talked about in, in, in this game of ghosts, which is the Jeremy Bentham's notion of deep play which is uh, applied to gambling, but with the deep play is like extreme gambling, which I think it applies to serious climbing in the same way, which is where, you know, what you stand to lose far exceeds anything yes. that you can possibly win. So all you do, you get onto the summit, you achieve whatever your dream is, you have this transient moment of the summit and you come down, right? The other option, you lose your life. Yes. But the fact that you could lose your life validates what you're doing. It makes yeah, it absolutely, sure. ultimately important because it's you're actually prepared to put everything totally on the line to believe that this is worth doing. Non-bullshit adventure. Yeah, yeah, and that is why I think 
climbing has produced an extraordinary amount of climb, very good literature yes. in a way that football and golf hasn't. Because they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's exactly why I wanted to raise this, because there is something so different, isn't there, about mountaineering. And, um, and Wayne Rooney writing about death in football, I don't think <laughs> it's going to happen, really. 